Hello, my name is Wade Demur, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. One of the areas that we have that we focus on in Rotary is with the youth and bringing up those new people that will be serving us in Rotary. With us today, we have two people. We have Rachel and we have Parker. Welcome. Thank you. And you are with the Ventura Rotaract, correct? Yeah. Rachel, I'm going to start with you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Great. Thanks for having us, Wade. Uh, I am currently, as of yesterday, the president of Ventura Rotaract. Okay. And I currently live in Ojai, so Ventura Rotaract kind of mm -hmm. spans a, a, the, the county, really, of Ventura. And I have lived a few lives before I came here, though. I'm originally from Alaska. I wow. was born okay. and raised there. And uh, my escape plan from the cold was to do <laughs> international development work in South America. So I learned Spanish and went down to Peru and Colombia and did international development work there. And then ended up back in Alaska doing nonprofit work with a girls empowerment program. And when I got tired of living in the rainforest of Southeast Alaska, <laughs> I came down here to Southern California and wanted to get engaged and found Rotaract. Great. So how long have you been here in Southern Cal? About two years now. Oh, two years. Okay. Now, what did you do in uh, South America? You said you put some time in there doing projects. What kind of projects were those? Yeah, I've done some work in Peru with mm -hmm. uh, recycling sustainability mm -hmm. in um, large they call them basureros down mm -hmm. there. They're okay. the, the garbage dumps. Right, right. And then I also, in Colombia, taught English there for about six months with the government of Colombia in a vocational training program for okay. youth of uh, low socioeconomic status to break the cycle of poverty. Got it. So what got you into Rotary, the Rotaract? Yeah, well, I learned about Rotary when I was back in Alaska. I had some family friends who were involved there. And... I wanted to do some work with them, and it, the timing didn't end up working correctly. So when I moved down to Southern California, I didn't know anyone here except two or three family members, and started working in a job where I was just kind of clocking in, doing the nine to five, and didn't really feel like I was making a difference in the community anymore, and wanted to get that back in my life. Okay. And how did you find the Rotaract Club? I think it was a good old-fashioned Google search oh, that really? got me there. Okay, good. Yeah. good to hear. And was there something specific that uh, attracted you to that group? I really love the international focus okay. of Rotaract and Rotary, and mm -hmm. that was kind of one of the hooks that got me into it. Very good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Now you, Parker, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I grew up in Southern California in Ventura, so born and raised here, kind of scored on that end. Um, played professional volleyball or played volleyball through college and then played professionally in Germany and Europe wow. um, for two years and then came back and got involved with real estate and so now I do sales and management. Great, great. And you are the past president, correct? I am the past president and the past district representative for Rotaract. Oh, great. Okay, so. outstanding. And what did you think about those two positions? It was fun. Tell us uh, a little bit about the president one first. The president one, it was an awesome opportunity just to experience how things worked and kind of be put in a position of leadership over my peers and, and learn from them and their different strengths as well as being able to connect and network with Rotarians such as yourself. Okay. And the size of your club? Uh, we had about 26 members. Okay. Oh, good size. Yeah. Good size. And you met once a week? Was yeah, that? once a month. Um, and then we our board meeting would meet the other... Okay. Like two weeks after that. Okay. And tell us, because uh, the audience may not know this, the DRR position, District Rotaract Representative, what does that entail? So that entails pretty much being the mouthpiece for Rotaract in the district kind of circle. So anything that is involving the district or happening within the district, I hear about it and then I bring it back to the Rotaract clubs and try and bring up problems that Rotaract clubs are experiencing or want more support from the district and bring it up to the district level to be able to help solve the problems or make things happen. Like we sent, this last year, we sent five Rotaractors to Big West, which is the Western Conference for Rotaract. Nice, very nice. So your job would entail probably connecting in with all the different Rotaract clubs in the district then? Yeah. And how many are there? Do you know offhand? I think there's between 13 and 16, and we just inaugurated a new Rotaract club okay. up Good. north of San Luis Obispo. Okay. And time commitment for being that uh, district Rotaract representative? Well, we have our one monthly district call. Okay. Um, 
other than that, it's kind of just coordinating with whoever your your Rotor Act advisor is or your the youth services on the district. So just kind of coordinating with them, probably about four to five hours okay. a week, roughly. Wow, that's pretty good then. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you read the job description that Rotary puts out there, but um, the DRR, District Rotor Act representative, actually is considered a district governor for Rotor Act in the district. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I didn't know that. that. <laughs> Oh, so sick. congratulations to you for that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Tell us uh, now a little bit about your club. We'll start with you first, and then we'll go to Rachel. So our club is a community-based club, and we started about 10 years ago, and we do our annual Mexico Build project, which most people in our district know about because we come and ask for assistance and involvement within the project. We get a huge turnout for people in our district within other Rotaract clubs participating in with it, as well as just Rotarians getting involved with it. So it's a great connection point. Um, other things that we do within our club is we do local community services with city center and, and um, yeah, just little things like that. Okay. So um, tell us a little bit about this uh, Mexico build um, that's done in conjunction with another organization, or do you actually organize that yourself? So we do partner with another organization called Quarter Zone, okay. and they basically help find the families, they do all the vetting for it, they get the supplies to the site, and then we bring the labor. So okay. this last Mexico build last year, we had, I think, just under 72 people show up for the wow. build, wow. not including people that Quarter Zone brought with them. Okay. So they provide staff to help people that aren't mechanically inclined or have never built a house before, and they help teach them how to pound nails and framing and all that. Got it. So you said you had 72. Is that all from our district? That is from our district, as well as San Diego, okay. down to Long Beach, basically all of Southern California. Okay. We have different representatives from everywhere. And specifically, they were rotor actors, or was it also Rotarians? Also Rotarians. It's it's about a 70-30 ratio. There's okay. about 30% rotar Rotarians that come from our district heavily, and then sometimes from other districts that know about us. Um, and then the others, uh, Ventura Rotaracts has a very high presence, and then other Rotaract clubs around our district and okay. so forth. And the time of the build, how long does it take, uh, that trip specific? So we normally go down, it normally happens on like a Saturday. Okay. Um, we, we actually complete the project within a day. So, wow. so we get to the job site like, like probably eight o'clock in the morning and we go until about six or until the project's done. And once we have it completed, then you know, it's, we'll go down Friday, we build all day Saturday, and then some people that go home on Sunday or Saturday night, other people stay until Sunday and we make a social out of it. Great. What do you consider the most rewarding of that, that project? I think dealing with the families, because a lot of these families are to be chosen to get a house. Um, mm -hmm. They have to do certain level of community service within their community down there in either Tecate or Tijuana. Um, and so most of their living situations, like this last family, was basically living on, have three kids living in their mother's you know, kitchen floor. And so that that was their space and the living conditions down there, you know, living on a kitchen floor here is, is not yeah. the same. It's you're in pretty much a garage. Very true. So good. Good. Rachel, we're going to go to you now. How about you? What did you enjoy this last year project wise or event wise? Yeah, the, the Mexico build was definitely a, a huge impact on me. Just seeing, you know, a family that came from being homeless to owning an entire house yeah. in one day was kind of amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah, I also really enjoyed working with the city center transitional living center okay. in Ventura. We we put on a Christmas party and an Easter party for them every year. Oh. And we go out shopping beforehand and get a bunch of presents for the kids, but just don't tell them because they're actually <laughs> from Santa Claus. Good. Okay, got it. And you know, for some of the kids there, those are the only Christmas presents wow. they're going to get. Wow. So seeing the look on their faces and how excited they are for Santa Claus to come and visit <laughs> oh, nice. and get presents is just phenomenal. So tell us a little bit about the organization itself. Uh, you said City Center. Mm -hmm. So the structure of that is that 
county run, local run, nonprofit? Do you it's know? A, it's a nonprofit. Okay. Yeah, and they're they're you know locally here, mm -hmm. a transitional housing center for families okay. um, who are getting out of rough situations and okay. getting back on their feet. And how did you find this connection to where you actually got to participate as a club with that, that group? That came before my time here. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. So. It, got connected, there was a, a member within our older Rotaract Club when it first got founded that had connections okay. to the city center and that's how it kind of got started is we built a relationship with them and then it's just maintained ever since and it's just one of our staple projects that we do. Good, good. Is there anything else that you uh, really enjoyed this last year? Another thing that we did was planting trees up in Ojai. Oh, okay. So they just had the huge Thomas fire right. come through right. and they're rejuvenating that, that area so it was pretty incredible to be a part of that. Sounds like your club does about half work and projects and the other half is a little bit of social time, so. Yeah. And organized, I'm sure, more of that. Was that kind of the intent of the Rotaract group, your club? Yeah, we like to stay active. So basically every month we do at least one volunteer project okay. and one fun social thing to okay. network and you know build leadership skills and professional development. Got it. So um, how do you plan that? Is that planned a year in advance, month to month, week to week? It depends on who's <laughs> in the leadership position and okay. who's doing the planning. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, I got the two leaders right here right now, so <laughs> right. we couldn't go wrong on that one. Very good. Okay. Um, as far as other organizations that you work with, have you reached out to anybody or is there a direction that you want to go with that as far as finding new partners? Right. I'm excited to start doing some planning for this upcoming year right. and um, really kind of being strategic about what members are wanting to get out of the club Good. and how they're wanting to impact the community and making that impact through our volunteer events. And how do you do that? Just um, questionnaires? You actually sit down with individuals and ask them or? Yeah, yeah, we have planning sessions with the board and with our general meetings okay. as well, where I've facilitated processes to kind of get at those questions of what people are interested in. Good, good. And the Rotary Sponsor Group that you have, how do they um, participate in, or do you use them for reference, referrals, resources? Right, our, our sponsoring Rotary Club is pretty amazing, and we have a a club advisor who who serves as a liaison between our groups okay. and it's it's pretty pretty great seeing the the collaboration that happens between those clubs okay. because we both bring a different thing to the table and if there's need from either group we communicate and work together to achieve our goals good and that person would be Dale Jetke. Dale, of course. We can mention him, give him a little bit of uh, <laughs> props here. Very good. Um, what does he attend all of the meetings or yeah. really? Good for yeah. him. Outstanding. Yeah, he's very influential in, in why our Rotaract Club has been so successful over the years yeah. is because he's very, puts a lot of time and in, in effort into it and helping build leadership throughout us as a club as well as individuals. He, he takes that extra time to really invest time into you. Great. So he's been doing this for quite a while. I'm going to guess about 10 years now at least. Yeah. So good for him because uh, he was actually my chair when I was governor, and this is way back in the day. So yeah, he's involved back at that time. What other um, items or things does Rotary do to try and give you an understanding of the organization? Do you have that kind of a resource to actually know what Rotary does? Right. Uh, we're invited to the the Rotary Rotary district events and okay. conferences okay. Uh -huh. and things like that. And I think a lot of times it depends on people's availability if they're able to attend those or not. Okay. And do you remember any specific ones that you think are, I would say, more valuable as far as your time commitment? I know District Governor Sandy this last year has done a really large effort within including Rotaract throughout the district and in really making an effort to draw in Rotaractors to any district event that could be participated in. Um, definitely, I think this last year with pets um, training, yeah, having good. myself, Boris from Santa Barbara, and Corey from Conejo Valley Rotaract all be able to network. We, it, it was kind of having anyone that we needed to connect to was there, and we were able to build a larger network of within Rotarians outside of just oh, our Ventura Rotaract, Oxnard Rot Rotary Clubs, 
it, we were able to connect more into like Westlake, Thousand Oaks, Simi Valley. We had a bigger network of people that kind of had a little bit more face-to-face -face conversation with than just, hey, I'm going to talk about our project and can, can I come out? So, And do you think that helps, that camaraderie with uh, the larger group? Uh, is that something that you expected or something that you anticipated or something that just all of a sudden showed up? I, I definitely think it's it empowered us through our year being uh, past president. I definitely think it should be continued because that, you know, creating steps to build that bond within Rotary to Rotaract will help continue bringing more Rotary, Rotaractors into Rotary. Um, I think having that kind of empowers Rotaractors on what our, the power of Rotary is as a whole and what, what kind of tools we have within it. Sounds good. Um, do you do actual questionnaire surveys with your members to see what they want also? Or is that something that just kind of shows up in the meetings? comes out that way. Uh, we haven't done a pen and paper survey as of yet. Mm -hmm. But you, I'm, I'm sure you interview or you ask, you ask mm -hmm. them for testimonials or whatever. I think we have two of them that you've done right now, right? Uh, in video form? Oh, yes. Okay, those are great. So uh, maybe we'll take a look at those. These are two of your members, correct? Uh, that talked a little bit about their experience. Yes. Very good. Let's jump to those real quick. Oz here. Proud dual member of Rotary Club of Bakersfield and Rotary Club of Bakersfield Twilight. I joined Rotary because of their storied history, the proud tradition, and their undying commitment to serving locally and abroad. I look forward to continuing the collaborative efforts of Interact, Rotaract, and Rotary. Because together we connect, together we transform, and together we inspire. What I love about Rotaract is it's a self-service club that connects people from around the world. I got involved in Rotaract about two years ago, and I can't wait to continue being a part of the club and joining Rotary. Okay, so um, back again, great, great videos. It's, I can see the excitement definitely in your, in your members. What do you think is the number one event that your club actually likes the most? Is it a project? Is it an event? What would it be? I think the Mexico build is definitely top of the list. Yeah, that, is, that is very yeah. good. That is a good one. And how many uh, participants do you actually have? Half the members? Just about all? Or? Oh, like all of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our, our, okay. our club grows from our regular 16 to 20 members to we'll have a full steam of 40 to 50 people at every meeting three months in advance before the build. Wow. So we pull in members from other Rotor Act clubs are attending our meetings, plus college students that are in Inventor College for the Architect Department and other building stuff, right. they also get involved with it. So wow. it, we, it has a very large pull within the community for within our club and, and people outside of it. And that's outstanding. That is very good. When we uh, look at Rotor Act, um, the new changes, the Council on Legislation now changed it to where you're actually members of Rotary. You have a special classification, but uh, definitely you're a member instead of a program itself. Have you seen or heard of the effects of what's going to happen with that? Do you offhand know those? I'm kind of putting you on the spot just because it seems like it's not too well communicated. Yeah, it definitely from being on the district side, kind of seeing a little bit of it, um, not too familiar with all of the aspects that that impl applies to now Rotaract, but I definitely think some of the implications from it are going to be positive from, um, from now kind of creating more of a level standpoint Correct. and more access to international rotary than mm -hmm. where we were before as a program. Good. And how about you, Rachel? I haven't yet heard okay. what's coming down the pipeline. Okay. I think I was at a rotary meeting and they kind of mentioned it and mm -hmm. I was like, what? <laughs> well, actually, actually, the uh, council legislation passed that you will now become members of rotary as opposed to a program. Being members of Rotary, the anticipation and the hope is that the transition will be less. In other words, you are now actually included in that membership of Rotary. So you actually are Rotarians when you sign up for Rotaract. Awesome. I think that's the biggest difference in change. So now you're actually part of the group, part of it. So I think that's going to have a big difference to it um, and major impacts. What it's going to do and how they're going to implement it, that, again, is part of the future plan, I would say. Leadership's taking a look at that. But I think it'll be a benefit to you. Now, Parker, we're going to start with you. 
Have you considered going into Rotary once you're finished with uh, your, your Rotaract career? Yeah, most definitely. Just because of the investment that Rotary's made in myself, um, it's definitely, I see the value of it. Plus the relationships that I've built from being on the district as well as president, it, it would be a hard, the relationships are there and so it's hard to leave the organization True. with, it, it's become family and so a lot of my ties are within it. And then the business growth that I've experienced from being in Rotary too. Good, good. So. Now, do you see any potential drawbacks, things that would maybe not attract you to the organization? I think with looking at our space just here in Santa Barbara and Ventura, I think kind of how the club structure is, is difficult. Most of my time is spent during the day, and I think the time commitment that is involved with it, not so much the projects, because we, we do a lot of projects right. at Rotaract, right. but more so the general meetings constantly being there every Wednesday. Yeah. Um, I think I know me and Boris have kind of had a conversation about what starting one looks like when we both finish, mm -hmm. um, but starting something a little bit more in the afternoon and geared towards uh, our, our kind of timeline. Correct. So That sounds good. So a little bit less structured overall to rotary standards as far as traditions with something new that you can create. Yeah. I think that's a good one. Very yeah. good. How about you, Rachel? Have you thought about that? I have thought about it. Really? And I think... In order to better explain where I'm at, I need to back up a little bit and talk about kind of the life situation of these 18 to 35 year old Rotaract members and community members, really. Mm -hmm. I think for people in this age group, life is in a state of change. A lot of people aren't settled or um, rooted in one place or one job or one relationship or one, you know, there, there's a lot going on right. in people's lives around this, this age range. And the world of work is changing very drastically as well. True. So when I was growing up, it was, oh, what do you want to be when you grow up? You can be, you know, one of three things, a policeman, a teacher, or a doctor. <laughs> and that was the options, right? right? And now, I mean, there's jo like entire jobs or entire sectors that yeah. were created two weeks ago that we didn't even know existed before. So things are changing drastically. And I, you know, people are working remotely. My job is completely remote, and mm. I can do it from anywhere in the world. Okay. And I think there's just a lot of factors to consider. Um, one thing that I've loved about Rotaract is that it has made me feel more of a member of the community. Before I moved here, I would kind of bop around from Alaska to Peru to Colombia right, to right. wherever I felt like going. And I've actually really enjoyed having Rotaract as a base camp mm. here and a, a way for me to feel like I'm part of a community. Okay. Okay. That said, I don't know what the future holds for me exactly, okay. and I can't plan my you know ten year plan. I used to have ten year plans, and I mm. found out that they actually never happened <laughs> because <laughs> life would change. This is true, yeah. So yeah. that's the long answer of I don't know. Okay, okay. So Rotary right now is a maybe, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. okay. Absolutely, that sounds good. What would draw you to Rotary to continue that? Yeah, I definitely am passionate about the international aspect of Rotary and going out and going abroad and being involved in projects on the ground in places that I've never been. Hmm. Just, it just seems like a really exciting learning and growing opportunity to do that. That's good. Well, it seems like that's most of your life right now anyways, is a lot of that moving around. Good for you. How about you, Park? Have you thought about that? Going more international or is that something that attracts you to join Rotary and get into that? Yeah, actually I'm going back to college for a global management wow. um, degree. So it's, the world is becoming more globalized and that's definitely something that I do appreciate about Rotary is the international influence that it has. I definitely think that is a huge draw to our generation being so connected globally. I know that there's a Facebook group called um, Rotaract Couch where it's a bunch of international rotor actors that travel a ton where it's like couch surfing except it's with a rotor actor so you can connect with people like hey i want to be in berlin for the next week do you want to meet up and grab coffee if you don't necessarily need to sleep on their couch so it's awesome just to be able to have that network of people got it so now did you have the background of being uh, global being a global citizen like rachel here or were you more or less southern cal 
Well, I, I did have the benefit when I was younger. I sailed internationally, so I was ranked okay. 25th in the United States at age 16. So traveled a ton, o- almost had an Olympic campaign, and then playing professional volleyball in Europe. I was always, from a young age, global mindset, always having that idea of the level of success was you have to be a global mindset to be able to truly understand what's going on in the world. Got it. So your club now, since both of you are so involved internationally, is your club kind of in that same direction? Your members, do they think more globally also, or is it something more community-based? It kind of depends on the individual. A lot of them have the desire to be international and have are making efforts to go international and traveling. Um, I think that's one thing that has drawn them to us and why our Mexico build is so successful because we can go international going into Mexico with a three hour car ride. Right. So a lot of our members do find that value. Okay. Just if they're, their level of quality of international is, is a different Correct. base on. Which, which is kind of interesting because I think overall in Rotary, more of them think community. They don't think international. Um, for members in Rotary, less than 10% will probably do international projects or do anything abroad. Interesting. So that's kind of, it is very interesting. So I'm going to guess 50% of your club actually are thinking in that direction right now? Yeah. That is very interesting. Now, as far as community, because we're looking at a lot of international community-wise, what, what do you think the significance of your club has been as far as the impacts that you've done community-wise within the Ventura area? I think we've been able to fill a very unique niche in the community and that we have the manpower to be flexible and fill lots of different needs. So when the marathon is in town and they need volunteers to staff that, we're there, you know, ready for them. When there's when you know needs come up, we're able to to be flexible and meet those. Good. Very good. And um For you, back to you. This year, what do you have planned? What are some of your big plans you have for as president? Yeah, I, you know, with the skill set that I come in with, I told my board that we can do anything from have fun in Ventura to go to Uganda, and I can facilitate anything from, you know, either edge of that spectrum. Great. And it really depends on what the members want to do, what we will. One thing that I'm really interested in doing is building more of a mentorship bridge between Rotarians and Rotaractors and really getting into what skills Rotaractors want to build and matching them with mentors who can help them do that. Very good. Well, both of you, thank you very much for your time. We kind of ran out of time on the show, but loved hearing about that. And um, we're hoping that we see you in the future also as Rotarians because we're going to be extending a handout to help you out too. You guys have been very active. And thank you very much for joining us. With everybody, uh, thank you very much for joining us and we will hope to see you next week.